Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and this pair of jeans has definitely seen better days. As a matter of fact, the only thing that's left is the pant leg. So let's turn this pant leg into something useful, like a denim sack. For this project, we will need the pant leg of a pair of jeans, a lining fabric, and some interfacing. And I would recommend a medium weight to heavy interfacing. And if you have lightweight, we can always double up on it. You will find one seam that's considered a flat lock. So it's been stitched down. The other seam is a regular seam. It hasn't been stitched down. So we want to take that edge and flatten out the pant leg so that this little seam is along the edge. And you won't need to worry where that flat seam lays. Just lay the pant flat so the seam is flat. You might want to give it just a slight pressing and it's just going to be easier to work with it. Once we have given this a light press, we're going to be able to decide the size of the sack. And this is going to be a personal decision on how you want this to look. I do want my sack or my bag to have a cuff. So I'm just going to turn a cuff over approximately the way I think I'm going to want it to look. From here, I can decide on how big the sack is going to be. I want a short sack with a nice big bottom. So I've just put a mark on how big I want that side of the sack to be. From here, I need to add a bottom. Because this is a very wide jean, I want a four inch bottom. So I need to add two inches because I will be using both sides, plus a little bit of a seam allowance. So two and a half inches. I'm going to measure down two and a half inches from that mark and just put another chalk line. This area is going to be cut off after. So this is the main piece that I'm looking for and I need to make sure I have a fabric piece big enough. So open it back up. So the lining fabric needs to be this size doubled. So I fold a piece of fabric in half with that fold and I can match up the fold with the fold of the jeans. If you find you don't have enough fabric, you can always make it a little bit shorter. So I know this piece of fabric is going to be big enough for my bag. And I definitely have some extra. I'm going to leave that extra on and trim it off after I put an interfacing on. And the interfacing I'm using is from Pellon. It's a deco bond, so it's a little bit heavier. That heaviness is going to make that sack stand up and this is fusible on one side. So I'm going to fuse my interfacing onto the back of my fabric and leave about a quarter inch up at the top without that interfacing. And then when you press this interfacing on, you can roll that seam back and that way you'll have a straight finished edge on your fabric. If you want a thicker interfacing and it's very light, you can double up with a couple of layers. Once the interfacing is on the fabric, we're going to be able to cut them together and that's just going to make it fit better. So match up those folded edges up at the top and the folded edge on the one side. This folded seam allowance is going to fit right underneath that hem. So lay the fabric out so that is going to sit right along that top where you're going to stitch the hem down and it doesn't have to be exact. Match up the two folds and smooth out your layers. We're going to be able to just turn this back and we will know exactly where we need to have that seam allowance. So I'll just turn this back and draw where the seam allowance needs to go. And I'm not worried about this bottom, I'm going to trim them together. So I can take this off and then stitch on your line. As I'm stitching, I just fold up that seam allowance. Once that row of stitching's been done, I'm going to be able to cut a smaller seam allowance. And I'm going to cut at least a half an inch, maybe even an inch. From here, I can take this and press that seam allowance open. And as you press that open, you can roll that seam back up at the top. Our fabric in interfacing now is the same size as the pant leg. We can turn this right side out and put the pair of jeans right through that tube. We can match up those two seams and have the fabric slide right up to the bottom of that hem. 
and pin. So we have the good side of the jeans inside and the good side of the fabric on the outside. Now we can just do a row of top stitching all the way around the top of that fabric. So there's just a little row of stitching along the edge. From here we just need to flatten the fabric out. Now I can cut that lining and the pant the same size. You can cut it with a rotary blade or you can just draw a line and cut it with a pair of scissors. We need to put some boxed corners on. And you can put those boxed corners anywhere you want the bag to sit. And just put your hand in and make sure everything is flat. I want the bottom of the bag to be four inches. So I need to cut out a two inch square on each side. Straighten out that bottom and draw a two inch square. Do it on one side and do it on the second side. And cut out that two inch square. We're going to be cutting the fabric, the inner facing, and the bottom of the pants. If your scissors are not strong enough, you can always do one layer at a time. Just lift up and cut. If your scissors are sharp enough, you can do it all at one time. So I have this little point at the bottom. Once it's trimmed, we can turn this lining so that it's facing the outside. So we have the bottom of the jeans and the bottom of the lining. We're going to work on the bottom of the jeans first and stitch a seam allowance along the bottom of this piece. Once that bottom seam is stitched, we're going to be able to stitch these corners. We want this edge to match this edge. So if we take these two points and pull them, those edges are going to meet. And if it's not exact, don't worry about it. Flatten up that bottom seam and stitch this straight edge and do that to both corners. Once those two two inch blocks have been sewn, we have that nice big flat bottom. The lining is going to be done in a similar way. We just need to leave an opening. So we're going to match up the edges and just stitch a little bit on this edge, leaving that center part open because we need to turn it right side out through that opening. We're going to do the same thing. Pull those squares together and stitch along that line and do that to both corners. We now have this long tube and now we can turn this right side out. Push the bottom of the jeans into this opening and pull it out. When the bag's been turned right side out, be sure to poke out your corners of the bag and the lining. For the bottom, just match up those seams and do a row of top stitching. Now we can just put the lining inside of the sack. Match up your corners and now I can turn my cuff down. My denim sack is now done. The fun part is you can really make this any size by just turning down a cuff. The bigger the cuff, the smaller the bag. The heavier inner facing does help the bag stay upright. However, it does look nice if you crunch it a little bit because after all, jeans sort of do have that crunch look. Now we have a great denim storage sack. They're a lot of fun to make and each one has its own personality, just like a good comfortable pair of jeans. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.